Most people are told the same thing when their blood sugar starts climbing, that insulin resistance only gets worse. That once it starts, it never really goes away. But that belief is not fully true. In the next few minutes, you're going to hear something most people never hear at the doctor's office. Insulin resistance is not a life sentence. And for many people, it is not permanent. Here is the part that surprises almost everyone. Your body does not suddenly fail. It adapts quietly, slowly, and for a long time it tries to protect you. The problem is not that your body stopped working. The problem is that it has been sending warning signals that were easy to ignore. In this video, you will learn what insulin resistance really is beyond the labels and the fear. You will learn why it develops in the first place. You will learn why it often shows up years before any diagnosis. And most importantly, you will learn why science shows it can move in the opposite direction. Many people believe the damage is already done by the time symptoms appear. But research reveals something different. The body keeps a surprising ability to recover even after years of struggle. Muscles can relearn how to use sugar. The liver can reduce fat buildup. Insulin levels can come down again. These are not theories. These are changes measured in real people. You will also discover why age is not the main barrier. Most people think it is. Why the length of time you have had insulin resistance matters less than the signals you send your body today and why small consistent actions often work better than extreme plans that never last. There is a lesser known truth that rarely gets discussed. Insulin resistance does not switch on overnight and it does not switch off overnight either. It exists on a sliding scale. That means progress can happen step by step, even when it feels slow. By the end of this video, you will understand the signs that show your body is responding long before lab results change. You will know why early improvements are often invisible but powerful. And you will leave with a clearer sense of control instead of fear. This is not about quick fixes or false promises. It is about understanding how your body actually works. Because when the signals change, the response changes too. Stay with me until the end, because the final takeaway may shift how you think about insulin resistance forever. Welcome to our channel, where we break down complex health topics into clear science-based truths you can use. If this kind of content helps you see your health differently, subscribe to the channel now and join a community that believes knowledge is the first step toward change. Insulin is a hormone your body uses every day, even if you never think about it. Its main job is simple. It helps move sugar from your blood into your cells, where that sugar can be used for energy. You can think of insulin as a key. When you eat, blood sugar rises. Insulin is released. The key turns. And the door to the cell opens. At least that is how it is supposed to work. Over time, something changes. The cells that once responded easily begin to react less. They do not stop completely. They just become slower, less willing. The key has not broken. Insulin is still being produced. In fact, your body often makes more of it than before. But the lock on the cell door starts to wear down. It becomes stiff, rusty. Because of this, sugar does not enter the cells as efficiently. It stays in the bloodstream longer than it should. The body senses this problem and responds the only way it knows how. It releases even more insulin. At first, this keeps blood sugar from rising too high. On the surface, things may look normal, but underneath, insulin levels are climbing. High insulin sends a strong signal to store energy. Extra sugar gets pushed into fat cells. Fat storage increases, especially around the abdomen, at the same time, the cells are still not getting the energy they need. This is where fatigue begins. Energy becomes unstable. You may feel fine one moment and drain the next. Hunger can appear quickly after eating. Cravings become harder to ignore. None of this happens suddenly. There is no single moment where insulin resistance begins. It builds gradually, meal after meal, year after year. 
the body adapts quietly, trying to maintain balance as best it can. Long before blood sugar numbers rise or symptoms become obvious, this process is already underway. The signals are there. They're just easy to miss. For many people, the belief that it is too late does not come from nowhere. It forms slowly, shaped by experience and repeated messages. Blood sugar numbers start creeping higher even when eating habits do not seem very different. Each test result feels worse than the last. What once looked like a small problem begins to feel permanent. Weight loss becomes frustrating. The scale barely moves. No matter how hard someone tries, fat settles around the midsection and refuses to leave. Clothes fit tighter. Energy feels lower than it used to be. At the same time, the list of medications often grows. One pill becomes two. Doses increase. New prescriptions are added to control numbers that seem to resist every effort. This creates the feeling that the body is no longer cooperating. Then comes the message. Many people remember most clearly. You will have this for life. You will need medication forever. You can manage it, but you cannot reverse it. Hearing this repeatedly leaves a mark. It turns concern into fear. It turns effort into resignation. When progress feels slow or invisible, those words begin to sound like a final verdict. There is also a quiet comparison happening in the background. People look at friends or family members who develop diabetes later in life. They watch the pattern repeat. Higher blood sugar, more medication, more restrictions. Over time, this creates a powerful belief that insulin resistance only moves in one direction. That once the body reaches this stage, the damage is already done. This belief is reinforced by how symptoms appear. Insulin resistance develops silently for years, but becomes visible suddenly. When it finally gets attention, it already feels advanced. That timing alone makes it seem untouchable. All of this feeds the idea that it is too late to change anything, that the window for recovery has closed, that the only option left is control, not improvement. Science paints a very different picture from the one most people hear. Insulin resistance is not an on and off switch. It does not suddenly appear and it does not suddenly disappear. It exists on a range moving gradually in both directions depending on the signals the body receives. This matters because movement on that range is measurable. Researchers have observed changes happening inside the body that were once thought impossible. Muscle cells, for example, do not permanently lose their ability to respond to insulin. Under the right conditions, they begin to listen again. They take in sugar more efficiently. They rely less on high insulin levels to do the same job. The liver shows similar flexibility. Excess fat stored in the liver interferes with insulin signaling. When that fat is reduced, liver cells begin to regulate blood sugar more effectively. This shift alone can lower fasting glucose and insulin levels. Insulin itself also responds. When cells become more sensitive, the body no longer needs to produce as much. Circulating insulin levels can fall this reduces the constant push toward fat storage and energy instability. These changes have been documented not only in people at early stages, but also in those who lived with prediabetes for years. Even individuals diagnosed with early type 2 diabetes have shown improvement in insulin sensitivity. Not overnight, but gradually and measurably, age does not shut this process down. Older adults have demonstrated cellular improvements, similar to younger individuals when the signals were consistent. The length of time someone has had insulin resistance also does not act as a permanent barrier. It may influence the speed of change, but not the possibility of change itself. What repeatedly stands out in research is not perfection or intensity. It is consistency. Repeated signals over time shape how cells respond. The body adjusts based on what it experiences most often, not what happens once in a while. There is an important part of this story that needs to be told honestly. Timing does matter. The longer insulin resistance stays in place, the more deeply the body adapts to it. That does not mean recovery stops. 
but it does change the pace. When insulin resistance has been present for many years, progress tends to move slower. Cells have spent a long time responding to high insulin levels. Metabolic patterns have settled into routines that are harder to shift. Because of this, early changes may feel subtle or even invisible. The adjustments required often need to be more deliberate. Small efforts that once made a noticeable difference may no longer be enough on their own. Consistency becomes more important. Habits need to be repeated more carefully. Signals need to be clearer and more frequent. This is where many people get discouraged. When results do not appear quickly, it can feel like nothing is working. That feeling often leads to stopping altogether. Not because the body cannot change, but because the change is quieter than expected. Harder does not mean hopeless. It means the margin for inconsistency becomes smaller. The body still responds, but it responds to what it experiences most often. Even after years of insulin resistance, the body continues to seek balance. It is always adjusting hormone levels, energy use, and storage. It is always responding to repeated patterns. Cells do not hold grudges. They react to signals. When those signals shift and stay shifted, cellular behavior follows. Progress may take more time. It may require more patience. But adaptation never fully stops. As long as the body is alive, it is responding to its environment. That ongoing response is what makes improvement possible, even when the process feels slow and demanding. Reversing insulin resistance is not about doing everything at once. It comes down to a few powerful signals repeated over time. These signals tell the body how to handle sugar, energy, and storage. The first signal is how often insulin is released. Every time food is eaten, insulin rises. When eating happens constantly, insulin stays elevated for most of the day. This gives cells no chance to reset. Reducing insulin spikes begins with spacing meals apart. Less constant snacking lowers how often insulin needs to act. Refined carbohydrates raise blood sugar quickly and demand a strong insulin response. Reducing them softens those spikes. Allowing more time between meals gives insulin levels a chance to fall back toward baseline. The second signal comes from muscle activity. Muscle tissue has a unique ability. It can pull sugar from the blood without relying heavily on insulin. This makes muscle one of the most effective tools for improving blood sugar control. Even light strength work increases this effect. Muscles become more active sinks for glucose. Walking after meals also plays a role. Movement helps clear sugar from the bloodstream at the time it is highest. These small actions send repeated messages that sugar is needed for use, not storage. The third signal involves fat stored in places it does not belong. Fat inside the liver and muscle interferes with insulin signaling. When these fat stores shrink, cells begin to respond more normally again. This does not require dramatic weight loss. Small reductions can improve signaling in a meaningful way. As fat pressure inside the cell decreases, insulin works more efficiently. None of these levers require perfection. They work through repetition. Signals sent again and again shape how the body responds over time. Consistency, not intensity, is what drives change. When the body begins to respond, the earliest changes are rarely dramatic. They tend to show up in subtle ways that are easy to overlook. These quiet signals often appear long before lab results change. Hunger is usually one of the first areas to shift. Meals start to feel more satisfying. The constant urge to eat fades slightly. Time between meals feels easier to manage. This is not forced control, but a natural calming of appetite signals. Energy patterns also begin to smooth out. Instead of sharp rises and crashes, energy feels more even throughout the day. Afternoon fatigue becomes less intense. The need for quick sugar or caffeine starts to lessen. The steadier energy reflects better sugar movement into the cells. Cravings tend to soften as well. Strong pulls towards sweets or refined foods lose some of their urgency. 
the body is no longer sending emergency signals for fast fuel. This change often surprises people because it feels effortless compared to earlier struggles. Physical changes follow more slowly. The waistline may begin to shrink even when the scale barely moves. Fat around the abdomen is closely tied to insulin resistance, and small reductions can signal meaningful internal shifts. Clothes may fit differently before weight changes are obvious. Blood markers usually improve later in the process. Fasting glucose insulin levels and long-term averages take time to reflect what is happening inside the cells. This delay can be frustrating, especially when effort feels high. During this time, the body is adjusting behind the scenes. Hormones are recalibrating. Cells are responding to new patterns. Insulin signaling is gradually becoming more efficient. The healing process is often quiet. Progress builds internally before it becomes visible on paper. Those early signals are the body's way of showing that change is already underway. There is one truth that sits beneath everything else, and it is often missed because it does not sound dramatic. It is rarely too late. The body does not suddenly lose its ability to respond. It holds on to that ability far longer than most people are led to believe. At the same time, delay has a quiet cost. Insulin resistance does not stay frozen in place. When nothing changes, it deepens little by little. Cells continue to adapt to high insulin. Patterns become more familiar to the body, not because they are healthy, but because they are repeated. Waiting often feels harmless. Days pass without obvious consequences. Weeks turn into months. During that time, the body keeps adjusting in the background. Insulin signals remain loud. Fat storage continues its slow climb. Energy regulation becomes slightly less efficient with each cycle. Action works in the opposite direction. Each small change sends a new signal. Each repeated habit shifts the environment the body responds to. Cells begin to adjust their behavior based on what they experience most often. Progress does not depend on perfect timing. It depends on movement. When action begins, even in small ways, the body pushes back against resistance. Insulin levels begin to settle. Sugar handling becomes more efficient. Fat storage signals soften. This pushback is gradual, not sudden. It happens through repetition, not intensity. The body responds to patterns, not promises. Every day presents a choice between reinforcing old signals or introducing new ones. Those signals shape how the body adapts next. The direction may change slowly, but direction still matters. The ability to influence that direction remains present longer than most people expect. Your body is not broken. Every cell, every system is still listening. It is responding to the signals you send every day. When you change those signals, your body follows. Small, consistent actions matter more than anything else. If this video gave you hope or helped you understand insulin resistance better, hit the like button. Subscribe to our channel for more science-backed health tips and join our community of people taking control of their health one step at a time.